Hello, and welcome to Exploring Axon, a podcast where we discuss Axon Framework, Axon Server, and their ecosystem. I am your host and a software developer at Axonic, Sarah Tori. In this episode, I spoke with my colleague Stephen Van Bielen about message versioning, specifically opcasters in Axon Framework. I hope you enjoyed this episode and let's have a listen. Hi, Stephen. How are you today? Hey, Sarah. Happy to be back. I'm doing fine. I hope the same applies to you. Yes, absolutely. And great to have you back. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. So today we're going to uh, tackle one of those topics that we get a lot of questions during our trainings and also uh, in our uh, discuss platform, uh, which is message versioning. So mm. can you tell mm -hmm. me what is message versioning? Uh, so, so really the broad sense of the thing? Or, mm -hmm. or, oh yeah, okay, yeah. That's Let's fine. start broad and then we'll come back to the details. Of yeah, that. yeah, sure, sure, sure. There are plenty of details we can dis discuss when it comes to, to versioning. Um, I'd argue that from a very generic perspective, it's um, as we are with Axon having a message-based application, right? We're using commands and events and queries, and that's the means how we talk with each of our components within an application and outside of our application. Um, at a certain moment, you'd create a version of your application, which you're going to mm -hmm. run in production. Let's say we got version 1.0 or uh, 0.1, whatever you want mm -hmm. to uh, start off with. Um, you have a certain idea of what your messages look like at that moment in time. So maybe they have an right. identifier, uh, some some field commands make a change on a name, so there's a name field in there. But at a certain stage for a new release, you figure, okay, we not only want to have the name when we're doing this command, but we also want to introduce some additional fields right. like the address or something had to be changed or the naming was incorrect. Mm -hmm. So essentially, you want to change that message. So you have a new right. version of a message. What you'd normally be accustomed to when writing code is that you just change the code, right? You can just change it, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what we do as developers, right. so we're, we're comfortable with that. But as we're using these messages as our basic API when we're making such an application, it's a bit more complex than that. You cannot simply right. change. You need to deal with the fact that you have one version and you're going to a new version. Mm -hmm. So that would be message versioning, really the changes you have within your message. Right. Absolutely. And uh, thank you. That was that was really, really amazing. Like a broad topic, the explanation in just under two minutes. That was that was beautiful. And so generally speaking, in object oriented programming, the idea of upcasting uh, came from when, as you mentioned, when you have, for instance, a subclass uh, and you want to cast it in, uh, to to superclass and it has to be automatically done. Or in our case, we have to, I think, manually change a few things and so forth. So um, can we talk about that for a moment? How, how, how are we doing it in our framework, for instance, in Axon mm -hmm, framework? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're now adding the, the, the notion of, of upcasting in there. That's essentially mm -hmm. the framework's means to go from an older version to a newer version. Hence why right. it's indeed upcasting. You're going up the, the ladder, sure. so to say. Mm -hmm. um, how the framework deals with this is we're very focused in this on an event basis. We see that the right. strong suit with allowing those different versions is when it comes mm -hmm. to events mm -hmm. because, right. well, uh, you're storing your events indefinitely. Right. This is mm -hmm. where you're basing everything on. So those streams of data, those separate deltas, you will need to be able to cope with those till the end of time. Mm -hmm. So maybe of events from 10 years ago, well, uh, from 10 years back, you still want to be able to handle those events as if they mm -hmm. happened today with some minor right. changes to it. Um, the upcasters in Axon Framework essentially work on a stream of events because right. this is when you're retrieving uh, uh, events. You always do this mm -hmm. on a stream, either from mm -hmm. a point in time when you're uh, updating your query models from a secret right. perspective, mm -hmm. or when you're loading a uh, an aggregate for event source. Right. Then you're grabbing mm -hmm. the aggregate event stream. Right. So in both cases, mm -hmm. you would be receiving a stream of events, and you would essentially push them through your upcasters. Right. And the upcasters would validate, okay, do I need to do anything with this? If yes, then it will do that operation. If no, it will just, mm -hmm. well, disregard that operation. Right, absolutely. And so when you mentioned that, uh, that it's done in a stream of um, events, basically, yeah. Yeah. is it particular to Axon Framework or any sort of um, event sourcing, basically, uh, procedure you take, 
Is it done the same way? That's actually a very good question. I'm, I'm not very, very familiar how other frameworks or how mm -hmm. custom solutions, because, well, there are definitely people who make a custom DDD and event sourcing application, right? Sure. How they deal with this. Um, mm -hmm. I'd argue, though, that you want to keep the order of your events. Right. That's absolutely. very important. You need to know the yeah. order of when things have occurred. Uh, mm -hmm. As well, if an event changes from one version to another because you have mm -hmm. a new message version in place, absolutely. Um, I'd argue that that order is still very important. Mm -hmm. so, absolutely. And that's when we talk about that this this procedure will basically allow you to do non-destructive refactoring. Yes. Right? Because yes. you're keeping your history of events intact, which is really, exactly. really important. But, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah no, go ahead. Sorry. Good, to, good to point out. Yes, uh, I haven't touched on that, but it's it's mm -hmm. it's not like we're updating our events. That's that's a right. hard no no, right? You cannot yes, absolutely. in real life. You cannot change history. Your events are history. Don't do this. It's just yeah. on the fly. You do the upcasting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how can you um, allow an upcaster to see what version of serialized objects they're receiving? Yeah, How so, do do that? so so th this is an interplay between retrieving, in, in the framework it is, right? An interplay mm -hmm. between retrieving that stream of events, uh, pushing it through through the upcasters, right. and in combination with the serializer. Because, well, mm -hmm. the serialized format of your events, that's, mm -hmm. that's essentially the most important part here. Right. It also defines essentially uh, the, the schema of your events. Mm -hmm. what what version they have been serialized in because that's how you're right. going to deserialize them and essentially mm -hmm. that's also the most efficient moment to change them with with the right. serialized format instead of the actual mm -hmm. java object mm -hmm. um, so it's the serializer which would uh, deserialize the object to a certain extent not to the right. full-fledged solution just yet uh, right. so not to your actual uh, object that you have created mm -hmm. and it's in there that we provide you with the version of the event. Um, I see. Yeah. And do you That's have information to you can um, retrieve? Sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. And so when you um, when you're upcasting from one event to the next event, and that version changes, for instance, you have version X. The next one obviously becomes X plus one. Is that done through the framework, or again, do we have to manually do that? So, and can we manually do that? Do we have any control over that if it's done automatically? Th definitely. I, I understand where you're going to. Yeah, there, there's a notion of you create your events, you need to define what version they are, of course, right? right. You need to, when you're publishing those events, we need to mm -hmm. store that version of those events. Um, right. In the framework, this is what we call a revision. Uh, the payload revision would be what the columns actually called. If you would look in the database mm -hmm. schema or in Excel server, you would see payload revision. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Essentially, uh, in the bare bones, this is done through a revision resolver. This is okay. a component cool. you can configure on your serializer, which will resolve the revision for you. We obviously are biased in some formats to defaults sure. for those things. Uh, we, right. we would want it to, to work out of the box when you're doing these mm -hmm. versions. Um, right. And the, the thing we're uh, basing ourselves on is by doing this through annotations. That is, mm -hmm. is uh, what we're doing in a lot of places in Axon, of course, with our command handlers and event handlers. So there's a dedicated annotation called at revision, which you can mm -hmm. add to your events. And I then uh, as the default revision resolver is an annotation revision resolver, mm -hmm. find on your serializer, then mm -hmm. it take those into account. Okay. If you don't want to use annotations, uh, okay. you could always write your own revision resolver. Mm -hmm. uh, there is another one, a default or a, a component provided to you, which you can configure, mm -hmm. which does it based on Maven versions. So essentially I that see. you would automatically use the, the Maven version of your application uh, mm -hmm. as a revision for every message you have. Yeah, very cool. And um, actually on a... Um, feature I was working today, I was uh, looking at some of the, um, uh, the components of that, and I actually ran into an upcaster. And mm -hmm. there were several several revisions. And as you mentioned, uh, the annotation was helpful to to be able to see that and see where the annotation, uh, where, where the um, new version has gone. And of course, you have different classes per revision mm -hmm. um, that you can go and see basically what changes that um, have been made and so yeah. forth. So that's that was... Yeah. Actually, it was a it was a nice coincidence to have this morning right before before our recording session. <laughs> like, oh yes, this is where super, it is. This super is really cool. convenient. 
<laughs> Absolutely. So let's talk about the Axon framework a little bit uh, further. So the opcasters don't work with the uh, event message directly, but with an intermediate event representation. Yes. Can yeah. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I, I already highlighted upon that a little bit yes. uh, earlier when we were talking about uh, getting that revision out there. Also, yes. just just as an addition, I, I we we're obviously a bit biased to annotations, you, you notice. Sure. Uh, I do think that having that annotation directly on your events makes it very clear, mm -hmm. right? It already yes. is. Um, instead of having an explicit schema with mm -hmm. messages like this, you have an implicit right. one because it's right. the, the format of your object. So mm -hmm. adding things to it to make it a bit more explicit, like that annotation, I think that's uh, it's not only for for well just for a development perspective really. You see, okay, this is this version, so you don't have to deal with it somewhere else or offload that idea of versions. Um, just felt mm -hmm. that was important. Um, what was the actual yeah, question absolutely. you wanted me to add? Or the intermediate event representation, <laughs> right? Um, intermediate event representation, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, or also something I already highlighted upon a little bit. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. It's more efficient to work with the intermediate representation when you're actually yeah. doing the upcasting. Well, what I mean with mm -hmm. doing the upcasting is like uh, adding a new field or deprecating right. some fields. Or um, mm -hmm. if you would do that directly on a Java object, well, deserializing mm -hmm. that, if you have changed it from one version to another, that's not mm -hmm. going to work. Your application right. cannot do that because the, it doesn't correspond to it. So mm -hmm. intermediate representation, so uh, what that means is, for example, if you're using a Jackson serializer, it's in the format mm -hmm. of JSON node. Or right. if you're using the extreme serializer, that would be document from Dom4j. Uh, mm -hmm. Those types allow you to very finely, fine-grained, define new fields. Right. Also in a in a in a hierarchy format, so that you have mm -hmm. an object with an object in it and an object in it. Mm -hmm. Document allows that, and JSON right. node allows that, so that you have more freedom to make that actual change. Right. So it's from a perspective when you're doing the upcasting, it helps mm -hmm. a lot if you're dealing with that format. So right. the intermediate representation, really. Mm -hmm. So intermediate from the perspective that normally you'd store as byte array and right. you're going to a Java object. So it's really in the middle, just right. before going to the actual object. object. Uh, also done uh, by the serializer, uh, essentially, yeah. you would define. I see. Yeah. Now, in... Um... Particularly again, going back to the to our framework, because um, we do have we do use um, aggregates, aggregate identifier, and so forth. So, um, are the message aggregate identifier, the aggregate type, timestamps, things like that, are they adjustable by the intermediate event representation? Uh, represent representation. Gee, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um... I think the most honest answer would be it depends. <laughs> no, that's yeah, okay. That's, that's, yeah. That's, 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 that's <laughs> I'm familiar with that answer. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> let, let me fill back. So the intermediate event representation—that's the place where you are allowed to change the the format. Essentially, right. this is the right, object right. you would use to uh, perform the upcasting on. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. The things you could change out of the box on that mm -hmm. uh, thing, the intermediate event right. representation are the type, the type mm -hmm. being the, the fully qualified class name typically of the message, mm -hmm. the revision, because mm -hmm. you need to go from one version to another. So you need to be able right. to change that. Uh, mm -hmm. The payload can be changed and okay. the metadata can be changed. I see. This means okay. that aggregate identifier or message identifier or timestamp mm -hmm. mm -hmm. or aggregate type, if it's an event coming from an aggregate, aren't mm -hmm. automatically changeable. Mm -hmm. But there's a but. This intermediate event representation that's an actual interface framework right. provides, which mm -hmm. does give you handles to retrieve the timestamp, or retrieve the aggregate identifier. or So, well, you could create your own, which does right. allow you to change those fields. It's, however, gotcha. not done out of the box. Okay, fantastic. So um, changing the aggregate type, shouldn't that be allowed, though, out of the box? Do we support that through the, the framework's upcaster? Yeah, so um, I agree. It should be something which you could already do in mm -hmm. in, in Axon Framework, if you if you'd ask me. But it's a bit more complex than that because 
the scenarios where you would want to change uh, the aggregate type. So essentially, mm -hmm. changing where the event originated from right. is, is a bit more complex. Because mm -hmm. uh, what, what that signals, that need, signals the fact that you have an aggregate, so an aggregate right. stream, which mm -hmm. either needs to be merged, so you uh, add two aggregates together, or you split right. an aggregate in two. And this mm -hmm. process is just a lot more complex because, like I pointed out, the upcasting works on a stream of events, yes, on a single stream. So mm -hmm. if you're sourcing an aggregate from its own event, right. you only mm -hmm. get that exact stream. This right. makes splitting doable because you mm -hmm. have the entirety of events. Right. Merging, however, well, you're reading a single yeah. stream. You don't have the other stream yet. Right. So um, this is why, uh, if you really need to do this, uh, another scenario could be because you've changed the name of your aggregate. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. could also be a solution. Uh, yeah. Then, okay, you would have to do this right now on your own. Uh, mm -hmm. But we are thinking about means to have essentially dedicated aggregate stream functionality to change that, to adjust okay. those. Because right. it's just something which is going to happen in some uh, scenarios. Not mm -hmm. always do you have the exact right domain model, aggregate model in mind, uh, right. you need to be able to split and merge this stuff too. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, something mm -hmm. we have on our mm -hmm. backlog. That makes really. sense. So hence why it's still, it's not yeah. provided automatically. It'll be there. Yeah. I promise. <laughs> you can pin me down. in. <laughs> <laughs> That's very likely going to be a very nice block, uh, uh, block series or, or I don't know, maybe a webinar to show how that's going to work once it's there. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. That would be... But it, we, we should put it on the uh, list of uh, to do's exactly. content <laughs> do's that we should do. Awesome. Uh, so now let's. Uh, you did uh, tell me uh, a bit right now about the um, how do we adjust a single event out of a stream and so forth. So um, obviously there are many ways of um, using upcasters. So now let's talk about some of the more uh, quote unquote complex ways of of doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. So. We have actually uh, in our documentation, we have uh, a, a good portion of these explained there and in somewhat of a detail. But I'm curious to hear um, your explanation about them because reading something, it's always a little bit different than actually hearing what it actually is supposed yes. to do. Yes, so if that's OK with you, I'm just going to go through them with you and uh, uh, and ask you to uh, sort of walk me through it a little bit uh, in more detail. Sure. So let's talk about the uh, single event upcaster, which is one to one implementation of an event upcaster. How do we do that? Yes. Uh, and I, you I, probably I, did talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, 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 that would be the default approach, typically, a right. uh, single mm -hmm. event upcaster, because mm -hmm. in most scenarios, you're going from a given version of a message to another version. Mm -hmm. And you want to have a dedicated upcaster for that, right. for every mm -hmm. step in the change uh, mm -hmm. list, so to say. This is where that single event upcaster would come in. Mm -hmm. This is uh, essentially an implementation which works over the very uh, generic upcaster interface. Mm -hmm. right. Upcaster interface works on a stream. The mm -hmm. single event upcaster works on a right. single instance. Because it's essentially providing you a filter and a map operation in the stream. Mm -hmm. Right. And those are the things you'd have to implement, and that's it. And can you tell me a little bit about uh, the annotation that we had there, the can upcast and do upcast? Yes, yes. Where do you use those? Why would you use them? Yeah, so so those would be the, the single event upcast, so there's an, uh, an abstract mm -hmm. class, and those right. are the sole two things you'd need to implement. Mm -hmm. So the can upcast is essentially the filtering operation to right. decide whether that implementation needs to be taken into account for upcasting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is where you would check on the intermediate event representation. Uh, am I dealing with an event of the type I'm interested in and mm -hmm. the version? You would need to check both. Yep. And if, if that's the case, if you're mm -hmm. hitting an intermediate representation, which you need to change, you mm -hmm. being that exact uh, upcast implementation, then you return right. true. Right. Uh, and otherwise, you return false. Mm -hmm. If you would return true, that would give you a guarantee that the do upcast method is right. going to be ah. invoked of okay. that uh, single event upcaster. And this okay. is where you're actually doing the upcasting process. The upcasting, yep, no. perfect. Now, uh, how about the event multi-upcaster, which is basically one-to-many implementation Correct. of an event upcaster? Correct. 
So yeah. how do you do that? I know we we do the do up cast and then returns the stream instead of one. So mm -hmm. let's talk details. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, oh, so examples. They, they, if you have an example, that would be great too. Yeah, I think the the, the scenario when I hit I needed this was that we mm -hmm. had a pretty fat event with a mm -hmm. lot of information in it, right. and we wanted to split out several events from it. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to well, yeah, split it out from one to several. Uh, sure. This is what that event multi upcaster did. Mm -hmm. That you're mm -hmm. essentially well doing a form of multi upcasting. You're going to several. Yeah, might be a nicer name mm -hmm. imaginable now that I think about it. But uh, <laughs> that's that's yeah. what happens, right? You're building something, and then uh, years after, you think about a nicer solution. Regardless, now we can upcast uh, to that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> To the new name, uh, yeah. Okay. The, the, the can upcast would be similar because you're still mm -hmm. reacting on a single event. Right. Uh, but the do upcast uh, allows you to not return a single thing, but a stream in mm -hmm. because you're right. going from right. one to several. To uh, several of them. So yeah. that means that the do upcast return type is different mm -hmm. and that's it. Gotcha. How about the uh, context of where single event upcaster? Yes. So this one was a little trickier. <laughs> yes, yeah, this is a little, little, little trickier. Essentially, yeah. what this thing supports is mm -hmm. that you can merge data. Okay. So what context aware in this case means is that it's aware about other things which have occurred in the street. Mm -hmm. It can be aware of previous events or right. upcoming events. Mm -hmm. uh, it does so by having an additional method you'd need to implement, which mm -hmm. is, uh, if I recall this collectively, build context. Yes, that was my yeah, next yeah, question. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> right. That's the operation called uh, build uh, context, where mm -hmm. you can define what you want to use to store the context in. Mm -hmm. For example, you just have a key value map. Uh, right. This means that during the process of doing a can upcast, while well, you filter on which events you want to react, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. in the do upcast, you need to be a bit more smarter. Because on right. some events, you actually want to change. And on others, mm -hmm. you just want to collect information because right. you need that for the end product. I see. So that's where the build context then, you know, comes in handy because it Correct. helps you to actually build the context that you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Which is, yeah. It, it, it serves Perfect. as a means to create it and to store that context in. So sure. you can take it along going over right. the theme of events. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just as a refresher, the upcasters work on a stream of events, right? So you go over all mm -hmm. of them. Right, right, exactly. And now that uh, takes me to the next uh, kind of upcasting, which is then... Context aware event multi upcaster. Yes. <laughs> so then now it's like wait, we're just adding to this, right? The, the names are getting better and better. Uh, exactly. <laughs> this is, is yeah, yeah, a merger really of that context aware we were just talking about and the yeah. event multi upcaster. So that mm -hmm. you need to merge uh, several events and publish mm -hmm. out several events. Or maybe you need to collect data from a very early event and put that in mm -hmm. three distinct events. I see. Yeah. So in this case, then we have the uh, context of where single event upcaster, yeah. right? Okay. And then, um, so an example of that uh, for, for this particular upcaster would be like, for instance, if you're copying a field from one event to another, but then you have the requirements to generate several new events in that process, right? That's when, we use, when we use this upcaster. Okay. Fantastic. Be right there, Sarah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> um, so the last, uh, the last one I wanted to talk about in, in this series of upcasters was, is the uh, event type upcaster. Yeah. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So essentially, this, to me personally, is a thing which mm -hmm. should be resolved differently. But okay. it is how it is. Uh, mm -hmm. What I mean with this is um, one of the earlier when we were discussing what you can change on the intermediate yeah. uh, representation mm -hmm. is the metadata the right. payload and mm -hmm. the type. So okay. the type yes. being the, the type of the message you're dealing with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the revision. Now, okay. this type, the name essentially, in Axon Framework, this defaults to the fully qualified class name okay. of your messages. So uh -huh. the package and the class name combined. Yep. Now, okay. um, essentially, if you have your, your, your classes and you want to mm -hmm. move them from one package to another, Mm -hmm. This means you're changing the package name from Axon Framework okay. perspective. This essentially means you have a new event mm -hmm. because the name has changed. Uh, well, in essence, it's not a new right, event. Right, right. So uh, one way to resolve this, uh, if you have stored events, and mm -hmm. well, 
they've moved from one package to another is to use this event type yeah. opcaster. Um, ah. So this event type opcaster allows you to define from which event you're going in a builder pa pattern uh, fashion, going from mm -hmm. event with this name and this revision to mm -hmm. this event and this revision, where you can right. either provide a class or a, or a string as a fully qualified mm -hmm. class name. Um, this uh, helps you. So it's a current right. solution to do this. Mm -hmm. But eventually, we want to introduce the notion of having, um, well, different names for your messages so that you can define, right. OK, this is the, the, the type I want to resolve so that mm -hmm. you, for example, could omit the, the package name entirely of those things. I see. Let's talk about the um, the final question that I have. So uh, mm -hmm. is upcasting process, is it just for uh, the event message thing or does it is it also um, used in other types of messages and other objects maybe mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. can have different versions? V very, very good question because, well, uh, Axon doesn't only deal with events, as you know. Mm -hmm. It also deals yes. with commands and with queries. <laughs> Yes, we did a messaging episode together. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> a lot of different things. Um, exactly. We we do uh, with we I mean the framework. We have an emphasis mm -hmm. on events because right. that's that's arguably the most important bit because you're going to trail those events till the end of time, right? Right. So you need to be able to cope with older versions, uh, mm -hmm. even if you go from application version one to two to three to four. You still need to be able right. to cope with version one. Exactly. With the other messages, it's a little different because um, mm -hmm. to, to actually answer your question, the framework yeah. is focused on events. Uh, right. The interface is essentially ready to support it for other mm -hmm. messages. And I'm going to explain why okay. for yes, other messages. Do. It's, uh, it also right. makes sense. Um, yep. it, it depends on how you're going to do your uh, production releases, really. Mm -hmm. If you're doing, a, let's say, a big bang, so you just close off your old and start up the new, then right. you'll only need to be able to cope with your old events. If you're mm -hmm. going to do a, a rolling upgrade, for example, so you're running your mm -hmm. older applications together with your newer applications, well, okay. for events, we have our upcasters. But for commands, those mm -hmm. could also go to, to applications. So they could, the old application okay. could get a, a newer version of a command and needs to be able to cope with that and mm -hmm. vice versa. So... Mm -hmm. if, if the command comes from an old application and goes to a new, this is something where you would also essentially would like to have an upcaster for, uh, which is buildable, currently isn't set up in the framework as such. So okay. what you would see is that uh, we have an upcaster interface and mm -hmm. the implementations are focused on events. So you have an event upcaster, right. then, uh, mm -hmm. which is also still an interface. And then you sure. have those abstracts we just called up and talked about, which was the single, the multi, and the context-aware mm -hmm. things and such. Right. Um, this should also be uh, able to do, uh, you should also be able to do this from commands and queries. Commands, okay. um, this, however, needs, yeah, it requires some changes because events mm -hmm. work on a stream. Commands mm -hmm. and queries, you're sending one query, you might be streaming back a result if it is a query response, mm -hmm. but it's um, we need to deal with the API uh, differently there. So that's, right. um, and added, we don't get that request a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. So people find ways to work around it. Typically mm -hmm. that uh, the commands in the queries are what you'd call forward and backward compatible. Right. Right. So you don't, uh, that you only deprecate things and add optional fields. That's very basically mm -hmm. put the means to be able to go back and forth. So there are right. ways to deal with it, but it should be provided, we feel. So as, as similarly as with the, the aggregate stream refactorings, where we mm -hmm. have an issue for, there's also an issue for this on GitHub. Uh, <laughs> it is yep. always on my mind when we're going for a newer release. Is this what we're going to yep. do right now? Don't know yet. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's always a... Discussion in your mind, right? What's most important? Mm -hmm. exactly. And, and, and right, another right. last thing, which I, I find also very interesting, other objects you said. So yes, yeah. this yeah. is message focused, but there are mm -hmm. other things we serialize in Exxon, uh, other things which would change versions, essentially, mm -hmm. which can be, um, if you're using snapshotting, uh, you use the notion of a snapshot okay. event. So it's a yep. different type of mm -hmm. event. Uh, the default mm -hmm. snapshot we create is the entire aggregate. So mm -hmm. your aggregate also changes versions. So essentially, you could have an upcaster for your snapshots. Mm -hmm. Same applies for sagas. 
because Saga yeah. is a long-running yes. business process, right? Of course. As you've talked yeah. about with Yvonne. Um, yeah. So those could also change in the meantime. Um, mm -hmm. Also things we eventually want to have upcasters for. But again, they don't work on a stream. You get a single right. instance. So we need to yep. change the API into a format that it would mm -hmm. allow that in nicer means. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, that makes sense. Yeah. Fantastic. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so much, so many awesome stuff to talk about. And uh, for me to actually go and discover a little bit more about after our talk, I'm, uh, I have made a list of things that I want to uh, explore a little bit more, um, especially now that you mentioned snapshots and sagas and uh, also aggregates can can mm -hmm, have different mm -hmm. versions. And so it's that's uh, really good to know. Um, any final points that you'd like to add that I forgot to ask? So... Um... Any final points? What I'm thinking. Um, so, so about that, that last point really about uh, sagas and snapshots. Um, mm -hmm. We do have a feeling about this, and sometimes we hear it. There are ways to work around this, though. So, if mm -hmm. anybody hits this roadblock, just just mm -hmm. move to our forum and drop a question or check, because there might Absolutely. already be an answer around it. Uh, because mm -hmm. yes, we feel it should be nicer supported through through Axon, but mm -hmm. there are ways to work around it already. So right, don't right. feel, don't think, oh, this is not supported. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting a roadblock. This, this stuff is terrible. We mm -hmm. can help you out. So that's, that's really Absolutely. what I want to give people. Uh, yeah, and I'll uh, include the link to it's basically discuss.axonic.io, yeah. and I'll just include that link in our information section also. Um, fantastic! This was such a wonderful topic. It's one of those topics that comes up quite often so i really appreciate you taking the time well, and of course. discussing it with me and uh giving me some really great insight into it really appreciate it sure thanks, thank sarah. you Stephen. as always pleasure. i hope you have a great day same for you sarah it was very nice thank you talk, talk to, to you, you soon time. all right bye-bye bye-bye i hope you enjoyed my talk with Stephen. please join me next time as i explore more details of axon framework and its environment until then have a great day and happy coding